Hi there and welcome back to iFix Tech Tips. In this video I'm going to discuss why your computer keeps crashing, why it keeps shutting down and why it may not even turn on. In all my years of dealing with these types of problems I've found that there are four main areas that causes your computer to crash, shut down or just fail. And I'm going to go through each of these four areas. I'm going to explain to you why it does it and what you can do to prevent it. In the first section, I'm going to talk about software and operating systems. In the second section, I'm going to discuss viruses and malware. In the third section, we're going to talk about hardware and hardware faults. And finally, in the last section, we're going to talk about overheating. So let's get going with our software section. So what is an operating system? An operating system is what you physically see on screen. So it could be Windows 10, Windows 8, you may have Mojave, you may even have Catalina on your Mac. So all of these is how you interact with your computer. The operating system is the top layer, which is the very top layer of access to your computer hardware. Without the operating system, it won't do it much at all. Operating systems are very complex, very, very complicated. They have lots and lots and lots of processes that run in the background, lots of things that can go wrong. So why does an operating system or the software on your computer fail? Software and operating systems are very, very complicated, very complex systems. They comprise of millions and millions of lines of code and it doesn't take much for something to fail. In fact, Windows 10 is a miracle on its own, the fact it just works with almost any type of PC you throw at it. You can even put Windows 10 on a Mac computer and it will work without a problem at all. So what can cause your operating system to fail? When your operating system updates itself, it's probably because it's downloading updates or new features to your operating system. Usually, these updates are gigs and gigs in size and can be downloaded for quite some time. If you have a power failure, for example, your battery runs out while you're doing the updates, then that update will fail and that's a bad idea. So applications you've got on your computer can also cause problems with the operating system, especially if you're using really old and out of date software. For example, Office 2007 or 2010, which is no longer supported, has no more updates, definitely does not have any more security updates, and any problems detected or any, any security vulnerabilities could cause a fault on your computer. Old software can also include Adobe Flash running a very old version, old printer software where it's not been updated for such a long time that the latest version of your operating system is not compatible with the old version and your Windows just crashes because it doesn't know how to talk to your printer correctly. There's a quick and easy way to fix old outdated software and that's by going to the manufacturer's website, downloading the very latest software for your device, for example if you have a printer go to your printer manufacturer's website, Epson, Canon, etc. Download their latest software for your printer and that should download all the latest drivers, install the latest drivers and it will also attempt to auto-update your printer when there's new available updates. On the subject of drivers, it's really important to make sure your graphics card has the latest drivers, also your motherboard and anything else connected to your computer. So if you wanted to update your graphics card drivers, simply go to your graphics card manufacturer's website, usually it's NVIDIA, could be AMD, then look for the latest software for your graphics card. If you're using Windows 7 or Windows Vista or even Windows XP, then you should really update this to Windows 10. As of January 2020, Windows 7 lost all support from Microsoft, so Microsoft will no longer issue any more security updates or patches to the operating system. This means Hackers can easily gain access to your computer on any new exploits which are discovered since January 2020. If you're a business and you're still running Windows 7, this means you're no longer GDPR compliant. What does that mean? That means if you suffer a data breach because of your software is out of date, then you could be liable to huge fines from the ICO. So I really, really encourage you to update all your software to the very latest Windows 10. Same also for your Office software. If you're using Office 2007 or 2010, then you really need to update that to the latest Office 365, and that will ensure you are GDPR compliant. Right, viruses and malware. 
This can cause major, major issues to your operating system. Viruses can sit on your machine for years undetected. This is because virus writers don't want to be detected because they're using your computer for other reasons. They could be using your computer to send out thousands upon thousands of spam or to hack other computers using your computer as a proxy. So a lot of viruses can remain undetected for years. They don't cause any malicious problems or any shutdowns or anything suspicious. However, some viruses and some malware are there just to cause as much damage as possible. They could encrypt your computer, rendering all your files useless unless you pay a hefty fine, or they could just be there to be as disruptive as possible. So, what can you do to prevent virus on your computer? Firstly, install a decent antivirus program. Bitdefender is my choice of antivirus software. It's one of the top rated, highly rated across the world, and it has one of the highest detection rates can't go wrong with Bitdefender. I use it myself on all my computers, Mac and PC. I also sell it to my customers, both business and residential. If you don't have a premium antivirus like Bitdefender, then Windows Defender is very, very basic and it will do an adequate job. So lastly, make sure you need to scan your computer every single day. If you've got a decent antivirus, it will do an automatic scan for you daily anyway. I recommend also once a week doing a deep virus scan so that doesn't just scan all the new files you put on your computer, which normally a quick scan does, but it will scan every single file on your computer, just in case there's something that's got onto your computer which you've not been aware of, or even if it's an old virus which has never been detected before, and the latest virus definitions have now um, accounted for any anything old which could be in the system which has never been previously detected. So do a deep scan once a week, highly recommended. Check out the description below, I've left you a link for you to run an online virus scan. Um, it's by ESET, good company, they do a good online scanner and if you don't have a premium antivirus on your computer or you rely on Windows Defender then I recommend just running a full scan right now. So what is hardware? Hardware is basically all the components, the physical components that make up your computer from the screen you look through to the keyboard you type on, the touchpad you use to navigate, um, to the internal components such as your processor, that's your brains of your computer, the memory, um, the hard drive, all these components need to work in unison and if one fails then usually everything fails and that's when your computer will crash or may not even turn on. The most common hardware failure is hard disk drives. Your hard disk drive is your main storage on your computer. So when you turn your computer off at night, all of your, all of your data gets stored onto your long-term memory, that's your hard drive. So the hard drive, it can comprise of two things, a mechanical drive, which is a physically a spinning disk, um, traditional on most computers, and more commonly um, an SSD drive. Um, you get an SSD drive now on a lot of newer computers and laptops. It's the same type of storage your mobile phone has, it's the same type of storage on your USB stick, what you plug in. Or it uses memory chips to store your data so there's no physical moving parts. There's benefits to having an SSD drive. The benefit of an SSD drive is the speed increase you, you will see. For example, a, sta a normal, just a standard SSD drive will give you 10, maybe 20 times the speed increase over your old mechanical drive which you're used to. So if you're looking for an upgrade, an SSD is a brilliant upgrade to make and SSD prices are coming down quite a lot so now is the time to upgrade. But anyway, hardware faults. Um, your hard drive spinning 5,000 times a minute a minimum. Some hard drives spin 7,000 times a minute and it's spinning every day continuously and eventually things start to wear. So when your hard drive starts to wear um, you'll start seeing slowdowns, maybe some blue screens and crashes. Slowing down is the most common fault but eventually your hard drive will just seize and that's when everything stops, your data is lost potentially. It's really important to make sure you back up your data. So daily backups is preferred, automatic backups to the cloud is the best way forward. An automatic cloud backup will ensure all your data is safe no matter what happens to your hard drive or your computer. Lost, stolen or simply um, you have a flood or fire or something, your data is stored in the cloud and you need to make sure your data is um, backing up every day so just do a few checks, go on, go into the cloud interface of your backup system and just double check to make sure all of your data is there 
even the very latest files you may have uploaded or the latest photos. Quick test is to create a little um, file, maybe a text document or Word document and put the date in the title and then double check in a few hours time on your cloud to make sure that same file's actually uploaded. Then you know the automatic backup's working. If you don't have a backup, then I recommend um, free locations. It sounds excessive, but you know we always work in freeze. So for example, the first backup should be your computer. The second backup should be an external drive or a USB stick or something external to your computer. And the third backup should be an off-site backup, such as a cloud backup. If you don't want to use cloud backups, then a second external drive, but store it away from your computer in a different building if you can, such as in your garage or a friend or relative's house. So at least then, if, you, if your house catches fire, your data is totally safe. Hard drive failure is very common and it's mainly very common in laptops. Why is this? Because most people move their laptop around, especially when it's turned on. Your hard drive is a spinning disc and it's got a head that reads on the platter. So as the disc is spinning, the head reads the data. And this, this head sits literally microns above the surface. And so if you move your laptop around, you put it down a bit too hard, that head will bash against the surface as it's spinning 5,000 times a minute. And that's a massive, that's called a, that's called a head crash and your head and your disc platter is clever enough to be able to survive a few little tiny scratches on the surface it removes it reallocates spaces on your drive moves data around but after a while you get one scratch which is on the boot sector or the boot area of your hard drive and that's why your computer won't turn back on again it just doesn't know how to get past that scratch and it won't physically boot multiple head crashes is quite dangerous as well your data if the head bashes against the disc really hard then that can not only damage the platters it can damage the heads and that will almost make your data impossible to recover. If you have an SSD drive it's not as important because an SSD drive doesn't have any moving parts whatsoever so moving it around it probably won't be affected so you're more prone to damaging cosmetically like the screen or the casing if you drop it and stuff. SSD drives can still fail, data gets corrupted mainly because of what we just discussed in the first section about viruses and software and operating systems. So it's, even if you've got an SSD, it's really important to make sure you back everything up anyway. So like I said, have free copies of everything. So what other hardware can fail other than a hard drive? Memory is one of the most common. If you have a memory failure, you'll probably just get blue screens. Maybe your computer won't even turn on. It doesn't turn on, you may hear it beeping. Those beep those beeps are actually quite important to a technician like myself. They normally beep a certain series such, such as beep, 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 beep. And that long beep and the, and the smaller, shorter beeps usually indicates a code. And that code indicates what the problem is. You know, it could be memory or it could be GPU. They're the most common um, beep codes you get. Other things that could fail is your processor can fail. Your GPU can fail due to overheating usually. Again, we'll talk about that in the next section because overheating is quite an important thing to keep in mind. Onboard motherboard components can just fail for no reason. Usually it's down to liquid damage, that's what we normally find, corrosion. If you use your laptop by the beach or on the beach, sand can get in there. Se the sea water, you know, the air, the salt from the sea water in the air can cause corrosion. We get a lot of owners who own boats down here in Paul and Dorset, so sea, sea water and sea salt in the air can cause corrosion especially if the device is used on the boat a lot. Just a spray alone will cause serious damage. So stay, keep your devices away from the sea, especially the salty seawater. So basically, in this section we've summed up hard drive failures, the most common failure. And again, I, won't, I don't want to keep going on about it, but it's really important. You must always back up. Free backups is what you need of everything. Other hardware components such as processor, memory, GPU, onboard components. Again, liquid damage is one of the major issues why these fail. Electronics can just fail, so just keep an eye on your devices. If you notice blue screening, if you notice things are slowing down, crashing a lot, then usually there's a reason for it. If it's not down to operating systems or viruses, it's most likely a hardware fault. And again, that's something we can look into for you. We have our own extensive diagnostic systems we use, which tests everything from hard drives to memory, processors, all your onboard chips, your motherboard, just to make sure everything's all functional. If you want to run your own diagnostics on the hardware, a lot of computers when you first turn it on will give you an option to run a diagnostics. For example, on most laptops, 
It's one of the F keys you can press when you first turn your computer on. You can run the diagnostics. The short ones and long diagnostics, they're a little bit biased because obviously a lot of manufacturers don't like their hardware failing. So in my opinion, I don't think they give you a full, the full result. Um, an independent diagnostics from an independent um, diagnostics manufacturer, such as the tools we use ourselves, will give you a thorough diagnostics and it's not biased towards their own hardware. Okay, so now we are looking at overheating and how that can seriously affect your computer and how it can cause serious damage if you leave it. So what causes overheating? Simply put, overheating is your processor and GPU, your graphics card or your graphics chip getting too hot. If they get too hot, your, your computer could shut down on its own. It goes into a thermal shutdown to protect itself. If your computer does just shut off for no reason, then it's probably because it's um, going through a thermal shutdown and I highly recommend not to keep turning it back on again let it cool down and then try again an hour later usually overheating is caused by excessive amounts of dust inside your computer it builds up on the fans, on the processor fan, the case fan um, some laptops are very very thin, very very slim they just don't have enough airflow through them to keep them cool enough so it's really important to keep the dust cleaned out. A little bit of dust build up inside one of these ultra slim laptops can be quite serious. Um, if it gets really, really hot, then the, there's a bit of paste that sits between your fan and the processor. And what that does, the paste will just seal any gaps and creates an airtight seal. And that allows the heat to effectively be transferred away from the metal of the processor to your metal heat sink and fan. And then it disperses through your cooling system. And if that paste starts to dry, then that's when you'll have some problems because the heat's not being moved, transferred away fast enough from the processor. Um, so your thermal paste could be dry, you could be very, very dusty inside. Um, if you've got damage to the fans, the fins on your fans, that means your fan's not spinning efficiently. You may notice some strange noises coming from inside your computer. That could be down to fan damage. Grinding noises could be the bearings starting to go inside the fan. Uh, you, that's usually the first signs of overheating where your fan's working extra hard and then the bearings just start to dry and start to go. How can you prevent overheating? Simply put, get your computer serviced every single year, get it cleaned out of dust. Um, you could do it yourself if you're confident enough. Um, a desktop computer, the big ones, they're a bit easier to clean. Take the side panel off, get a hoover. Don't use the bristles on a hoover because the bristles can cause static. Just use the plastic nozzle. So when you clean out the dust inside, try and keep away from the major components if you can, you don't want to do any damage to them. If your, hoover, if your hoover blasts air outwards, then that's a good thing. Use that instead because that will blast all the dust out from underneath the components. In our computer shops, we use a airline or we use something called a data vac, which is a little tiny, very, very powerful um, air compressor handheld and that blasts out all of the air. If you use an air compressor, make sure you've got a water filter on, it's really important because the air compressors, they, they have water in the pipes and you don't want to be blasting water residue across your um, components inside your laptop or your desktop, you know, water, as we know, is bad. Um, if you can blast all the dust out, that's perfect. So the desktops are much easier to clean. Laptops normally revolve, involve a full strip down of everything, taking out the motherboard, the processors, the fan, they have the smallest and, and fiddliest cables so only do that if you're confident enough again shops like ours we do that all the time so if you're not sure bring it into us and we can clean it all out for you make sure your vents are not blocked either by using it on a bed don't use your computer on a bed because the quilt will often block the fence um, also make sure there's no dust build up on the inside of the fence if you can get an air, air, an air duster inside it or blast the air out that's good but again don't you don't really want to be pushing the dust into your computer, you want to be bringing it out. So again, a full strip down, as we just discussed. On the subject of using your laptop on the bed, um, that's quite serious. And when you put your laptop down on the bed, your, your bed covers or your quilt doesn't just cover the vents around the side, but it covers the vents on the underside of your laptop. And those vents are really important. The air flows in through the bottom and it flows out through the side. So if those vents are all blocked, then there's nowhere for the hot air to, to be extracted and the hot air will just build up and build up and build up till eventually the processor and your internal points get so hot then they get damaged.
if you want to use your computer on a bed or on your lap, on a sofa or something like that, then I recommend using a laptop tray. A laptop tray will then be a flat surface and the air can get underneath. So you probably haven't realised just how important the feet on the bottom of your laptop really are. And those feet, d despite um, them being so small, just allows enough air to get underneath your computer. So how do you know if your computer's getting too hot? Well, the first sign is the fans getting really loud. If the fans are too loud, then it's time to check things out. You now look, you now allow the fans. You usually are usually you can't hear them at all, or they run silently. But if you start hearing it, if it's unusual noises, grinding or clicking, then you probably need to check it out. By the way, don't confuse clicking off the fan with clicking off your hard drive. If you think your hard drive's clicking, immediately back up your data. Have a quick feel as well. Feel the case of your laptop. Does it feel too hot around the top, around the sides? If it feels really, really hot to touch, then you probably need to get it checked out as well because it's getting too hot. Um, you shouldn't, if you feel like it's too hot for you to touch, then that's serious. So you want to get that sorted as soon as possible. And another thing to think about is, is today extra hot? If you're, if you're working on your computer and it's an extra hot day, um, you know, for example, you're working by the windows, lovely to look out, but your computer doesn't like hot days. Um, don't use your computer in direct sunlight. Try to avoid um, it near radiators. If you've got a desktop computer, definitely don't put it by your radiator because that just overheats it anyway. Um, try and allow airflow to your computer. Set up a big fan, for example. We've got this fan here, you can see. I use this quite a lot in my office, it's a massive fan, a bit loud, as you can see it's very loud, yeah. too loud for me for this for filming, um, but um, that is perfect for this office, it keeps things cool and even when I'm not in it I turn it on just to let the air flow and I open a window as well to let the air flow out. One other thing, don't leave your laptop turned on and then put it inside your laptop case because the air is trapped inside there and it will cause massive overheating. Like I said, if you're going to move your laptop around purely to protect the hard drive, turn it off. Definitely do not put it in your laptop bag with it turned on because that's just bad news for the laptop. The amount of times I've received a laptop from a customer, open up the laptop bag and the fans are going mental purely because it's been left in the bag and it's massively overheating. So don't do that. Okay, let's sum up briefly on this video. So, we talked about the four reasons why your computer could crash or why it won't even turn on in the first place. The first reason is usually down to software, operating systems failing to update correctly, it could be driver issues on your computer, or it could just be old, outdated software. We talked about viruses, malware, and how they can cause damage to your computer and what you can do. Basically, make sure your computer has a decent antivirus and keep it up to date. We talked about hardware issues. The main, the main cause of failure is hard drives. Definitely make sure your data is backed up. I know I've said it a few times, I'm going to keep saying it. Always back up your data onto free locations just to be on the safe side. We talked about other hardware points as well, the RAM, your processor, and that led us to overheating. Um, overheating is really really bad especially on hot days keep your computer equipment cool if you keep if you look after your computer equipment it will look after you basically so keep it running cool don't use it next to radiators don't use it in direct sunlight and avoid it avoid dust build up for example if you've got building work going on just put your computer away in a cupboard or put it in a cover it or put it in a bag or something obviously don't use it because all that dust from the building works will be sucked into your computer. If you like this video, if it's been helpful, please like it and subscribe to our channel. If you hit the little uh, notification, you'll get notified when my next video comes, comes on. If you want any help, leave us a comment below. I'm happy to offer advice. Don't forget to run a virus scan using the um, link I've attached to the description below. That's it. If you need anything, give me a shout. Leave us a comment below if you found this video helpful or if it's helped you or you find it useful at all. Thank you, take care.